Um, I shared out of Psalm 62 this morning, and, and there's a song that uh, that's one of my favorite songs, and I know it's one of my wife's favorite songs, but it's it was written by, or actually the song, the song was written by King David, uh, but the melody was put to this song by John Michael Talbot back in 1980, and so it's just a very very heartfelt song, so sing along with me in your heart. Only in God is my soul at rest, in Him comes my salvation. He only is my rock, my strength. I shall not be moved. <laughs> he alone is our rock and our salvation. Uh, David in Psalm 62 is out in the wilderness and he's either running from Saul or he's running from his son Absalom. We're not quite sure the date that the psalm was written, but I'm not sure that that's important because it's what he declares in this. And some of you may be in the sense that you feel like you're in the wilderness uh, wandering around. Maybe it's running from an enemy. Or maybe it's running from uh, sickness or illness or disease. Or, or you're in that desert place. I don't know. But I, I think this will speak to us. It will encourage our hearts. And I always like to say, if you're not in that place right now, you will be one day, right? Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and uh, I loved it. Um, had gone through a hard time, very difficult time a few years ago, and now going through a very difficult time now. And the question was, God, didn't what didn't I learn the first time through? And I really thought about that, and I thought, you know, the one thing that we're learning in those things is we're learning God. We're learning His grace, His, His sustaining power. When we feel like we want to give up and we feel like we just can't take it anymore, we're learning more of who God is 
and his love and his grace and his mercies through the things that we're facing or we do face. David cries out, and he begins with a declaration in verse 1 where he says, For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my deliverance. I think David had gotten to the place where perhaps he was relying on his own strength. Maybe he was relying on those he had allied with at some time. Maybe he um, was relying on um, his own power, his own status. And he comes to the place where he says, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. It's that time where we just kind of give up and say, okay, I'm, I'm tired of fighting this on my own. And David, I think, was in the very place that God wanted him to be, where he had given up relying on all of these other things, but to wait on God. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. And I, I can only imagine that, you know, I, I've complained about this, I've cried out about it, and now I'm just silent before God and my soul is waiting. For He alone, from Him alone, comes my salvation or my deliverance. There's two applications I want to make in this verse. Uh, one is when I, when I think of this word salvation, sometimes it's translated deliverance. It's the same word and has really the same meaning. But but I can I can remember back when when the Lord saved me, and there were so many other things I tried to find my hope in. Uh, there were things that I was placing my hope in, uh, but finally when I when I just gave up and said, God, from you alone comes my salvation, and we need to thank God this morning that He saved us. That that when we were at that place, He allowed us to get to that place that we turned to him and beckoned to his call as he drew us to him, and he saved us. And the second application are those moments in life, those seasons in life, that we finally get to the place where, God, we're just going to rest in you because I know, God, my deliverance can only come from you. It can't come from other people. I'm not putting my hope in other people. I'm not putting my hope in my own uh, merit my own righteousness, which is really nothing but filthy rags in, in God's sight. God, I'm resting in you. I'm not putting my hope in things of this world. I'm not putting my hope in uh, what I want to get, what I want to attain, what I want to achieve in life. God, I recognize that only in you comes my deliverance. He declares that God alone is his rock. God, you are my rock and my salvation. God, you are my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. I'm reminded of the parable that Jesus told when he spoke of two men who went to build a house. And one built their house on, on the sand. And when the winds and the waves came against that house that was built on the sand because it was not on a sure foundation, the house collapsed. It was destroyed. But the other man who had built his house upon the rock, when those same winds, those same storms came and assailed against that house, it stood firm. And so it's a reminder to us that when we place our trust, we place our hope on the rock, that no matter what comes our way in life, uh, we shall not be shaken. We shall not be moved because our hope is in God. Our foundation is in Him. The only, uh, how long, verse 3, how long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? David's particular instance here was that he was coming under attack by other men. They were trying to take his life. And whatever that enemy might be in our life, we ask the question, God, how long is this going to last? How long am I going to have to go through this? They only plan, he says in verse 4, to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They take pleasure in, in, in gossip. They take pleasure in bringing accusations against him that are not true. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. You ever had anybody like that in your mouth, in your life? You become wise to it and you begin to recognize it, that they're only flattering you with their tongue, uh, but in their right hand behind their back is a knife that they're waiting to stab. And uh, 
there, there are those that come against us to assail us in that way. But we have to remember that God's our protector. We don't have to protect ourselves. We don't have to defend ourselves. If we're walking in righteousness, if we're walking right with God, God will be our defender against those who are deceptive and try to deceive and try to um, malign us or try to bring us down. God alone is our defender. For God alone, he says in verse 5, O oh, my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. Here he repeats this again. Uh, for God alone, my soul waits in silence. I'm waiting on God. He's my hope. He's the one that I place my hope in, he says. He only, verse 6, is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, and I shall not be shaken because I'm standing on him. I'm waiting on him. He alone, he alone, folks, is our rock. He alone is our fortress, and in him alone comes our salvation. On God rests my salvation and my glory. Uh, if I'm going to be elevated, if I'm going to be glorified, and not in the same sense that God is glorified, but if I'm going to be exalted, then it's going to come from God. Um, James says that the Lord, um, the Lord brings down the proud, but he exalts the humble. Uh, let God do it. Let God bring you up. Let God raise you up. We don't have to try to lobby for our own position, our own place. Uh, but if God wills that, he will do that. But the proud, the haughty, he says, he brings down. But those who humbly wait on God, God exalts. And so we trust in him for whatever position or place that we're placed in, that God's the one that's going to bring us there. Verse 8, trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I love this. Trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to God. God will not reject us. When we come to him in humility, recognizing who we are in light of him, and we come to him humbly, God wants us to pour out our heart to him. He already knows what's there in our heart. But in a sense, it's a release and it's a healing for us to know that God hears, that we can pour out our heart before him. We can be gut level honest with God. I, You know, one of the greatest liberties in my life came when, when I finally realized that, you know what, I can just be honest to God. Um, it's hard to be gut level honest with people uh, because we fear what they might think. Uh, we fear that they'll think less of us. But man, how liberating it is to be honest before God. This morning, I want to encourage you to take some time after our devotion and just be honest to God. Pour out your heart to Him. Tell Him those things that are troubling you. Tell Him those things that are angering you. Tell Him of those things that you don't understand. God is a Father who is a loving Father, and He will in no wise cast us out. We don't have to put on a show to God. Aren't you glad about that? I think about that, and sometimes we, we live life in the external, we, we feel like we've got to put on a show for other people. We've got to be something that, that maybe we think they expect us to be. We don't before God. God knows us anyway. We can lay our soul bare before God, naked before Him, with no shame. God will in no wise cast us out. He reminds Himself in verse 9 that, that uh, th those in low estate or better breath, those of high estate, or a delusion. In the balance they go up, they are together lighter than breath. In other words, the ground at the foot of the cross is level, as Billy Graham said. Well, no matter what status we are in society, um, before the cross, the ground is level. We all stand before God equal in that sense. Put no trust in extortion, Set no vain hope on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Isn't it a temptation that whether it's financial riches that may come our way or, or what we call blessings, things that we receive from God, that it's easy for the heart to be turned and placed on them? 
on those things. I have some possessions that, that I really love. I'm, I'm thankful that I have them. I've got my banjo, I've got my guitar, I've got my, my woodworking shop, I've got my garden, I've got all these things. Um, and God's blessed with those. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. But he tells me, and he tells you, don't turn your heart from God and place your hope in those things. Those things should be gone tomorrow. But our hope only is in God. And He, He never changes. He will always remain. Well, I pray this has been an encouraging word to you this morning. Uh, I want to I just ask the Lord to, to meet you where you are, to bless you today as you walk with Him and seek Him. For those that are still recovering, June and the others I mentioned this morning, pray for their complete healing. Pray for Constantine this morning. He was discharged from the hospital yesterday into the apartment there where he and Leah are in Augusta. Um, pray for that family. Um, I, I pray that God gives us an opportunity today, wherever we might be, to, to, to sow a seed, to plant a seed of the gospel, which is the word of God in somebody's heart. And believe that the Holy Spirit will use that word. His word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It will not return void. If God has already used someone else to plant a seed of the gospel in their heart, would we have the discernment, the wisdom to know how to cultivate that seed? And that God would use us if, if he would, by, by his grace, allow us to watch him save somebody today. That would make my day. So I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.